It's a very complicated show, this, because sometimes you have to look at the camera and sometimes you don't. It's, yeah. Even Boris Johnson could get it now, so I should be able to. Here we go. <laughs> Boris has never got it. That's an important thing. He looks good on telly doing it. He looks at the red camera and thinks he's at traffic lights. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Jeremy Clarkson. In the news this week, on a visit to the British Space Agency, there's a surprise in store for John Prescott as he sits down in what he thinks is a port <laughs> <laughs> After an accident in the glue department, two B&Q workers are told to report to the store's health and safety officer. And following budget cuts at Battersea Dogs Home, management unveiled their new cost-effective way of dealing with abandoned puppies. <laughs> <laughs> On Ian Hislop's team tonight, a comedian who lists Groundhog Day as his favourite film, in which the same old sequence of events is played out time after time after time. And welcome to the show's 33rd series. Please welcome <laughs> Michael McIntyre. And with Paul Merton tonight is one of the main presenters of Channel 4 News. Easiest job in the world. Turn up, put on a loud tie, read out The Guardian, go home. Please welcome <laughs> Kristin <laughs> Guru Murphy. <laughs> OK, we start with round one. Ian and Michael, what's this all about? Oh, yes. This is the uh, boat race. <laughs> They're going up Ship Creek. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no paddle provided. Here they are. They've come back from the creek. Here they are. A woman hostage. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give her back. Here's the cellar. Sailor? Cellar? <laughs> Ah, oh, there's Sir Trevor. Bong! <laughs> this is a, a very uninspiring incident in our great naval history. Uh, the, the hostages got taken hostage, came back and sold their stories. Uh, which is not really in the tradition of Nelson. <laughs> or anything else. And selling it in the sun as well and keeping her clothes on. I thought when it was going to be in the sun... <laughs> I thought that was a... I thought Have she was going to be in a woman? sailor's hat. I thought it was going to be on her. <laughs> <laughs> on Fatone. Read my story, only in the sun. <laughs> How were they captured? They were in the rubber boats. Yeah. Dinghies. Dinghies. Are <laughs> well, they not dinghies? Guns. And iPods. Well, they had yeah, iPods. What was he doing with an iPod? To the defend themselves. His... But what, what, how were they... <laughs> they said, I read at one point, they said that the, the, the Iranians arrived all of a sudden. If you're at sea, you can't arrive <laughs> all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah. Whoa! <laughs> submarines! Ah, they could have been uh, submarines forces. all of a sudden come up, yes, didn't they? that's true. Yeah. But even though you have iPod on, you can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably going, boop, boop. So they're coming up behind me, wouldn't they? I think, to be fair, visibility in the Shatel Arab is only two miles. Mm. So it was, it was quite... <laughs> I mean, and these people are very quick, on the whole. <laughs> um, I, they... I think the big question is, what's Faye going to spend the money on? But she, she could pimp her boat, couldn't she? Make sort of... <laughs> 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 so I've learned it off right then. <laughs> <laughs> Story of he the, thinks yeah. that's going to be her next television appearance. <laughs> Pimp <and> my <laughs> There's a programme called a program Pimp on My it. Ride. I don't have to explain this to you, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the one you present? <laughs> <laughs> How do you know about Pimp My Ride? <laughs> You've been offered it, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've done up my Ford car. <laughs> <laughs> No, I haven't. Can we get back to these sailors? <laughs> Can I just say that I don't know if I'm the only person that found the story very boring. Well, uh, has nothing really of... happened to them. She basically said that they were blindfolded and then she heard what she thought was the cocking of a gun. Yeah. I think they were just setting up the table tennis table. <laughs> 
then she was smoking, wasn't she? She was smoking, they had a smoky in the thing. And... Yeah, but Patricia Hewitt said it's a disgrace. You thought, good, attack on Iran coming up. It's a disgrace, she's smoking. <laughs> <laughs> She actually said this sends out completely the wrong message to our young people. <laughs> I didn't, but what was the other one called? Anyone know? The one who went to the mirror? Arthur Batchelor, yeah. he's yes. called. I think he's had the worst time, because this poor boy, I mean, he, again, he had to find something to say in his story. So the crimes were they took away his iPod <laughs> and they called him Mr Bean. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, here. <laughs> Spencer would be near him now. Who's carrying the can for it all? Des. Des, Des Liner. Des, 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 <laughs> Des Liner. Des, Des Brown, the guy, he's a. Uh... Defence secretary. Yeah, there. He said he allowed them to sell their stories. Then on Monday, he changed his mind. On Wednesday, he told the press the decision was taken by the Navy. Although this was a Navy decision, I have to take responsibility for it. And I don't seek to hide behind the fact that the <laughs> Navy made the decision. <laughs> Adding, did I mention already the Navy made the decision? <laughs> yeah, it's quite clear. But, I mean, the, the, the hostage crisis was only solved because um, of you lot at Channel 4 anyway. Well, I, I was true that Jon Snow got through to the Iranian negotiator before the government. Um, <laughs> Ali Larajani, who, who, who appeared on Channel 4 News on the Monday, and then the government rang him on the Tuesday and yeah. said... Can we have our people back? And he said, yeah, OK. And <laughs> well, I don't know why we have a the foreign office. I just think <laughs> we get Jon Snow to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, the government just an absolute shower, weren't they? Well, Des Brown, I mean, he's done one interview. that He called it a pooled interview, which means that he called one journalist in from the BBC um, and, and said, everybody's got to use this. This is the new Brown School of Media Handling. Number 10 refused to tell us what they knew when. They said, we're not going to tell you that. What do you mean you're not going to tell us Yeah, it's us not that? our we're business, not, we're, we're the public. <laughs> <laughs> Some say the whole episode has made the Royal Navy top brass look like a bunch of chinless upper-class twits. An allegation strenuously denied by First Sea Lord Admiral Sir Jonathan Brand. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the head of Britain's armed forces is called Jock Stirrup. Did you notice that? Yeah. <laughs> Stirrup? Stirrup. <laughs> Jock Stewart. Air Chief Marshal. Chief of Defence Staff. Mm. What's all the curtains bit? What's all the, that... <laughs> <laughs> That's his career now. <laughs> As you get more advanced in the Royal Navy, do you eventually just turn into soft furnishings? <laughs> like that, the dope that's the highest rank in the Navy is actually now a sofa. <laughs> so I'd love it. Wouldn't it be great if his, hat, if his hand came down and his hat was still attached to it? Just sort of like... <laughs> Give it to you, so you're going to walk around a bit. The only way it looks normal is when you do that. <laughs> There's a new naval salute coming up, which is this. Yes. <laughs> so we're still with um, military matters. Yeah. Some secret footage, OK, NATO troops uh, during training emerged this week. These are French soldiers, OK, preparing to fire a new sort of missile launcher for the first time. Stand by. <laughs> 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 What's great about that as well is the cameraman obviously completely fell over yeah. laughing because yeah. the camera just goes... <coughs> what I love is it's, uh, yeah. things, things are no better on the other side. If you look at this... <laughs> Perhaps we should all give up this yes. war thing. <laughs> None of us are very good at it. The guy who you can hear laughing in that clip, OK, mm. he obviously said, Don't, look, give, leave, give me the gun, I'll show you how it's done. OK, yeah. here we go. These weapons are dangerous, yes. aren't they? <laughs> I, I honestly do think we've reached the point, as you say, we've now evolved to a point we can't do war anymore. We're <laughs> yeah. all just rubbish. It's good. Excellent. The day after Faye Turney sold her story, this was The Sun's front page. You notice something about that? They've spelt money wrong. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't know why Faye Turney uh, needs to sell her story. According to the papers, she earns £29,500, and that's not bad money. Oh, that was a year. <laughs> a year. Yeah, well, I wouldn't blame her. Uh, anyway, Paul and Krishnan, uh, here are yours. Okay. 
There's the sun, that's the uh, top of the world. That's a piano that's been cased in ice. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, well, it's global warming, isn't it? Oh, there's Al Gore. Uh, and uh, there's Madonna. Madonna. Uh, and that's uh, who? David that's, Miliband? Is yeah, it? the Environment Secretary. All oh, right, yeah. There's a concert, isn't there? Madonna has <sighs> been there. There's a concert sometime in July to sort of promote the idea of that we can save energy and uh, stop global warming happening. And its name is? It's Live Earth, isn't it? It's Live, Live Earth. Earth, exactly. Oh. They've seen that they, they sort of clocked the, the way Live Aid managed to stop famine. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the way Live Aid stopped. It's just a matter of catering in the end. Third world it? debt. <laughs> so, uh, Live Earth. And who's work. behind this one? <laughs> Al Gore, presumably. Um, yeah. yeah uh, no, it's quite about. difficult for him to be behind anything these days. He's quite fat. Yeah. <laughs> he sticks out of the sides, really. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, actually, I've got. You're not in a very good position to make that remark. There was a rather large picture of you in the press over That's the weekend. That's a tumour, actually. <laughs> 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 So's Al Gore's. Yeah. No, that's just no, a what rumor. it was was the paparazzi felt to notice I am the first man ever who's pregnant. <laughs> if they'd have come up and asked I mean, me, it's, I it's good to because I, I happen to be flicking through and I, I saw the photo and I, I like the fact that you've condensed because I've put on a little bit of weight yeah. and I've spread it around my body. Yeah. Whereas you focused it. I keep it, it in one place. <laughs> <laughs> Like a consolidation. Yeah. Do you mind if we get oh, back wait. to the quiz? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. For bringing this up, I'm going to give bonus points to you. You can name any of the bands that are playing. Yes, I can. Other than no, him. Oh. Other than Madonna, who are playing at this live Earth gig? The uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. No. <laughs> um. <laughs> the. <laughs> the uh, who? No. They're at the TC this year. <laughs> Rolling Stones! <laughs> oh, the Borodin String Quartet? <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't get Fallout Boy, Razor Light, Snow Patrol, and Madonna. But there was a report this week as well, wasn't there, saying um, the Arctic will be gone in 30 years. Oh, that's years. just crap. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, mainly because of you. No, listen. <laughs> on, on your channel, on your channel, OK, did you see the great global warming swindle on, on Channel 4 recently? Uh, yeah. 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 You mean the it one was that's very, very finished? funny, but you clearly took it seriously. <laughs> I, I, one of its arguments, the, the thing I've really enjoyed about it, is one of its arguments was that a rise in temperatures mm. Um, due to solar activity, of course, nothing yep. to do with people's Range Rovers, uh, causes an increase in uh, carbon dioxide rather than the other way around. Now, do you know the producer of that show, a guy called uh, Martin Durkin, got an email from a scientist who said, uh, to put it bluntly, the data you used in this programme was wrong. To which Martin Durkin replied, you big daft cock. <laughs> Fantastic. You see, that, that's the sort of academic debate you like, isn't it? <laughs> Do you enjoy the good weather we've been having this week? Yes, it was lovely. There you are, then. Thank me. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well, I enjoy the heat from the Arga, but I don't stick my head in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling like it. I'm so ill. Um, oh, God, what, what are your main lost? symptoms, if you will? What? what are your main symptoms that you have at the moment? Sweating, yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, that's mostly a result of him <laughs> saying I'm fat and killing the planet. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's, um, it's what I... we doctors call guilt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, how might the environment play a part in the lab Labour leadership election? They might have it outside. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Gordon Brown is saying, isn't he, that uh, he's um, going to try and bribe Miliband. Well, I think he's going to offer him a job well, and then there'll be a dream ticket of Brown and Miliband who can lose together. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be good to be b b bribed by Brown. He's got everybody's money, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he just has to come in with that red case and go, let's talk, Miliband. That'd be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine would... how much he'd offer you as a bribe. And a hate <laughs> from the pensioners. <laughs> <laughs> that was my brown impression. It's, it's not one of my strongest. He's left the door open. But he, he said he, he won't be seduced, he said this week. No. He said everyone's trying to... I mean, you know, I wasn't aware of this, but everybody apparently says to him whenever they meet him, stand, go on, stand, you'd be fantastic. <laughs> Despite the fact that they haven't heard of it. No, he says he won't be seduced and he won't be bullied. And he's, and he's leaving the door open. <laughs> <laughs> if he closes the door, the chance of him be bullied or seduced. That's it. Very little. <laughs> <little. laughs> I'm sure in terms of global warming, he should be keeping the heat in anyway. What's he opening the door for? <laughs>
You see that smiling thing he does? Yeah. Oh, no. When he talks about his baby. Thing. It's terrifying, but also, yeah. have we still got that piece of footage I saw earlier where he was smiling and then when the, you can see the precise moment the main camera went off. I don't uh -huh. know whether that's here or not. No. no. <laughs> Which is a terrible shame because... Really have we got it for later? Or can we go, get to go to it? There's probably a no. I said that's no, not okay. funny. No, no, it's gone. And it's my fault. Like the world. Um, <laughs> you want you introduced the clip, which you've already turned <laughs> <in>. <laughs> oh, You have got it. Oh, so that no was right good. Now it's Browns. Have you seen Brown smiling? Yes, you saw it earlier, and then you turned it down, so we couldn't <laughs> see it. Oh, it's the sneaker man, so the parents see it, and now we're gonna see it. <laughs> that there is no point in trying to be professional on this show. <laughs> Play the VT. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, cameras go off there. Do you see that? Put it back. Watch his smile. Whiz him backwards. Now watch this. You see him smile and then the main camera goes off and he stops it. Uh, look at that. No. Hey, play the tape and... Off. <laughs> Man's such a... This is the news that, having totally eliminated famine and poverty, rock stars are now getting together to solve global warming. Live Earth is committed to being the first carbon-neutral music event. Hybrid cars will be used for transport, food will be served in biodegradable containers, and the stage will be illuminated by the light that shines out of Bono's arse. <laughs> That's for the dark, moody bits. Oh, I've thought it through. Madonna recently made another commitment to the environment, pledging to fly to Africa only <laughs> once a year to buy a new child. <laughs> <laughs> a UN report uh, recently warned global warming will kill billions, whilst rising sea levels will destroy cities like Tokyo and New York. Don't say anything about chipping Norton there, so panic over. Um, <laughs> And so, to round two, it's the picture spin quiz. Fingers on the buzzers. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, this is computer dated. No, this is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the rabbit's saying, that's the last time I go in for that. Um, <coughs> this is the bloke who's been breeding rabbits for North Korea. North Korea's got a bit of a problem with, you know, a lot of people starving there. So this guy's idea was to sort of breed giant rabbits, send them to North Korea, without thinking about what you feed the giant rabbits on. Yeah. And, of course, you feed them on the food that if they didn't have the giant rabbits, the people would be eating the food. So you've given it a giant rabbit who basically just eats your food <laughs> until he's big enough to throw you out of your own house. <laughs> Come back from the pub with a Watney's Party 7 under his arm and he's chains the locks. Yeah, now, of course... You're half right there. Yeah. It is well, about... you haven't changed your locks, he puts a key under the mat. <laughs> <laughs> he sent it to North Korea to be bred, and they think that Kim Jong-il ate it. He's there. That's exactly what, uh, what happened, yes. What, the only rabbit? Yeah, well, I think there was another one, otherwise they wouldn't be able to breed, but, um... <laughs> he actually sent, I think, eight of them. And, Kim and that Jong -il probably went, is the only mm. food in the entire country now, isn't it? Well, they've eaten the rabbit. dogs. They love a dog over there. <laughs> Well, this is this because it's, it's the same with China. It's a famine culture. They say in China that they'll eat anything that's got four legs that isn't a table. <laughs> <laughs> you can know how big that is. Well, it's about, well, it's about four foot. Four foot tall. It's the size of a dog, which is probably what interested the North Koreans in the first place. Mm. Um, <laughs> it weighs up to 22 pounds. And they can feed a family of eight, but as you rightly say, they have to eat. They've got cooking skills, have they? <laughs> <laughs> Omelets for eight people. <laughs> How did the North Koreans find out about these rabbits? Well, you can't keep it quiet, can you? <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a greyhound race, if the greyhounds were chasing that, they'd sort of have to turn and run the other way, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure it's not a glove puppet. I mean, the bloke in the hat. It's a bloke in the hat, a glove puppet. <laughs> the, the rabbit's working him. No, apparently, I think it's he's... Red House go. <laughs> His name apparently is Herr Smolinski. Now, which one? Can I come on? Which one? 
<laughs> is that hair is in H-A-R-E? I don't think so, is it, no? It's a German rabbit, isn't it? It is. It's from Germany. And he said that some North Korean agricultural officials saw pictures of his rabbits on the internet. They liked what they saw. <laughs> they were surfing for food. Yes. <laughs> They liked what they saw and they liked the size of them and then one of them said, never mind all that, look at those rabbits. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Now, uh, do you think he's attached to them, Herr Smolinski? Well, if it's a business, probably not. No, you're right. He, he said here, care. people say you shouldn't eat rabbits. Rubbish. They have a lot of meat and you can make hats and gloves out of them. <laughs> Although no one buys the fur anymore, I just throw that in the bin. <laughs> Sweet dreams, children, if you're watching. Um, <laughs> This is the German rabbit breeder who sent giant rabbits to North Korea to be bred for food. According to the Times, Mr. Smolensky is a prominent member of the Brandenburg <laughs> Rabbit Breeders Association. <laughs> prominent, of course, being German for only. <laughs> Fingers on the buzzers, teams. They're rewarding school children. Yeah. Instead of penalising them, for bad behaviour, they're going to give them things like iPods mm -hmm. for good behaviour. Mm -hmm. Like a, ga like a game join show. the Navy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a game show. So throughout the week, I suppose, they'll be um, gaining prizes. It'll come to Friday, sort of 3.45, and they'll sit them down and go, right, you've managed not to uh, knife anyone this week. Um, you didn't set fire to anything. Um, you've got your iPod, you've got your DVDs. Yep. They're safe. Would you like to go for the mountain bike? Yeah. <laughs> and he'll say, nah, mate, I, I mean, I've got them, they're safe, I like them. I think I'm just... <laughs> I think at this point... I think I'm just going to do some happy slapping and head home. <laughs> and what kind of rewards, apart from the iPods, have you heard about anything? Oh, um, um, you get a peerage. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, why are these new guidelines needed? Because uh, discipline's broken down entirely in schools. Well, they're going on the internet, aren't they? They're posting the videos of the teachers being bullied. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a very serious one that isn't funny at all. W about a teacher having his pants pulled down. Do, do teachers, when they're marking now, do they put in the margin, see me with my pants down at www. <laughs> <laughs> but they're going to ban it. They're going to ban kids posting it on YouTube but it'll still count towards coursework. <laughs> <laughs> so, what other stupid piece of uh, advice have, been, have teachers been given this week? Uh, Education Secretary Alan Johnson said that the Internet Encyclopedia Wikipedia, oh, yeah. which can be edited by anyone, uh, is an incredible force for good in education. Odd, because its creator said that it is broken beyond repair and frequently unreliable. It is unreliable. I'm on Wikipedia mm. as somebody else, uh, cons uh, an MP. Have you heard of this guy in Newcastle? Has yeah. he stolen your identity? He's got my credits. It says the shows I've been on are, are under him. <laughs> You know, the Tories really are desperate, aren't they? <laughs> well, that's your evil Google twin, isn't it? Yeah. Who you go on, there's somebody who's more famous and richer and cleverer yeah. than you in every way, well, who's who, got the same name. Who, who's the Krishnan other Guru Murphy, yeah, there's yeah. loads of them. <laughs> 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 there will be. There will be. <laughs> Whose death did Wikipedia recently announce? Obviously, they've announced many deaths, I'm sure, that have happened. <laughs> but one that didn't. Was it yours? Uh, Marty Pello. <laughs> News of his demise. Dead, dead, dead. <laughs> <laughs> it prompted mass hysteria until Wet Wet Wet's publicist announced he's definitely still alive, at which point the mood took a downward turn. <laughs> According to the website, Sharon Stone and Demi Moore are, are both in the past headed the uh, Soviet Secret Service. <laughs> Do you know what it says Tony Blair's middle name is? Liar. <laughs> Whoop-a-dee-doo. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it does sometimes get things right. Uh, Edwina Curry said recently, Wikipedia makes me sound completely balmy. <laughs> this is the new guidance given to teachers telling them to hand out rewards five times more often than they hand out punishments. Meanwhile, Education Minister Alan Johnson has recommended children should use online encyclopedia Wikipedia despite claims about its inaccuracy. The internet has been an incredible force for good in education, said Mr Johnson, who, according to our research, is the only Chinese ballerina ever to have climbed Everest. <laughs> so, stand by. Fingers on buzzers.
Some people this week dropped a piano. Mm -hmm. An arts festival in a small town had saved up for two years to buy a fantastic grand piano, a Bersendorfer. Um, and uh, the removal men got it out of the back of the van, the organisers stood and watched them bringing out, and then they dropped it. <laughs> the picture of them here, look. Here they are loading it to the... Uh, That's a shoe. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why have you employed really tiny people to move it? <laughs> asking for trouble. This is Penny Aid's uh, much longed for piano being delivered by the removal men. You can see carefully, gingerly lowering it onto the lorry's tailgate there. And then, you see, just smashing it down onto the. Uh, I love the fact you've got their number there, so if anybody's going to phone them, I'll <laughs> <laughs> um, Now, how did the professional removers uh, get it back onto the lorry so it could be taken to London for careful repairs? 27 carrier bags? <laughs> no. They got a local farm around and, and he used his digger. <laughs> Casting her expert eye over the scene, Penny Aid, the, the woman who was waiting for it, said half a tonne of piano landing like that must have had a catastrophic effect on its workings. I don't yet oh. know the full extent of the damage. <laughs> I do. It's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fingers on uh, your buzzers for the next picture. This is uh, Wordsworth. Um, William Wordsworth, the daffodils and the Lake District there are the clue, aren't they? Um, Somebody is at Cumbria, the uh, tourist board at Cumbria, have decided to update his poem. Mm -hmm. uh, I wandered lonely as a cloud, check it. And uh, <laughs> they've put a rap version out with a squirrel. Let's have a look at this uh, so we know what we're and talking about. The sound about. you hear is Wordsworth turning. <laughs> <laughs> I wandered lonely along as if I was a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills when Kind of sight that puts your mind at ease I saw the sound of the lake and beneath the trees and they moved me like they were bass and the keys they were fluttering and dancing inside the breeze and seemed infinite just like the state What kind of child will be inspired by that? Well, like the squirrel doesn't even get shot in a drive-by. <laughs> <laughs> is it true? I read. I don't know. Is it true that he, the original line was, "I wandered lonely as a cow"? Is yeah, that right? that's and, absolutely and the, true. And his sister said, "You can't that sound stupid." Yeah, yeah. So he put cloud. But I wandered lonely as a cow. I think that's wonderful. But no, because cows aren't lonely. If it's a lonely cow, it is. They're not. <laughs> they, they move around in shoals. I know that. But how do you? <laughs> Um, do you know any of the other changes we've got? Uh, must have been 10,000 I saw in Maretina. No more than a glance than I registered their beautiful etc. <laughs> <laughs> Which means at the end of this round it is Paul and Krishna on four and in a Michael on four. Round three is the odd one out round. Ian and Michael, your four are Freddie Flintoff, Lionel Blair, John Prescott, and Mitch Buchanan. I, I know that Lionel Blair saved someone's life on Brighton Pier. He was making a TV show and somebody's trying to kill themselves. I don't know if they had planned on killing themselves or if Blair, the Blair sighting encouraged them. <laughs> but, um, but then they tried to kill themselves. Wrong Blair, really. And then. <laughs> And then Lionel Blair saved him, so now seeing the lifeguard, I feel things are starting to come together for us, Ian. Right. So... Um, <laughs> Freddie Flintoff was on, on the pedalo drifting in the Caribbean. So, uh, Flintoff had to be rescued. Yeah. You're saying Lionel Blair rescued someone. Prescott rescued someone from drowning. I remember the story. Everyone rescues people from drowning except Freddie Flintoff, who needed to be rescued himself from drowning. Because he was drowning yes. in a glass. That's... You're exactly right. Absolutely well done. No, you're right. Um, Weren't you in the Caribbean with um, Prince Harry? Keep going with that and you'll discover what it's like to have that right up your nose. Oh, my God. <laughs> so you were, then? I was in a, a region of the world where is Prince it... Harry was, yes. Well, well, well that's a tennis easy. court. We're, we're, yeah. we're bringing down the region a bit, aren't I, we? I have played tennis. How did that go? I won. Did you? <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> Oh, listen, I've written me. about it, all right? OK. Oh, really? All right, we'll wait for them. I'm going to tell this. <laughs> did you know you, you sold your I story sold, for sold money? Story. <laughs> I surrendered the game. <laughs> How 
How do you think the Queen's reacted to your friendship with uh, Prince Henry? I couldn't give a flying fuck. <laughs> Did she really say that? No. Apparently, Harry. <laughs> they would have alerted the Queen. They would have phoned her in the middle of the night. It would have been like the film, The Queen. I'm sorry to wake your Majesty. Harry's made a friend. It couldn't be worse. Is it? Is it Al Alfred? No, it's worse than that. It's Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> Uh, they've all saved someone from drowning, apart from Freddie Flintoff, who had to be saved when he drunkenly lost control of his capsizing pedalo at four in the morning. Final blur, he did actually rescue um, yeah. someone from the end of... Uh, it was Blackpool Pier, in fact. We got his hand, said, uh, come on, you don't want to die. Someone shouted, that's Lionel Blair off the TV. The man did a double take and then said, no, I want to go. <laughs> Paul and Krishnan, your four are... Songs of Praise... Climax 3, Blue Peter and Richard and Judy. Songs of Praise, that was recently in the news because as a sort of cost-cutting measure, the BBC uh, recorded a Christmas version of Songs of Praise and then sort of took all the sort of decoration down and the, uh, the hat off Jesus. And then sort of Easter, they sort of, they said, we're going to do the Easter version, so then people started to dress up and pretend it was Easter. So it was basically a cost-cutting thing, so that was the reason why they were in the news. Uh, Rich and Judy, of course, they've had problems with um, their quiz on their show, whatever it's called. We're Rich and, and Judy. We're with... <laughs> <laughs> is the quiz called Richard and Judy? No, the no, quiz is called. No, it's not, and that's what I was trying no. to say. <laughs> <laughs> you're on my team, even though I don't know who you are. You're on my team. <laughs> We've got to work together. Um, <laughs> well, it's, three. it's about faking it, isn't it? Is it? Because they've all faked it, except the porn film, presumably. They're, they're all deliberate um, scams, except, by mistake, a Scottish cable provider was meant to be providing a BBC programme and actually delivered um, Climax 3, a pornography <laughs> channel, into a lot of homes in Scotland. <laughs> uh, I read this and apparently there were a number of complaints, but only after about ten minutes. <laughs> You're absolutely right. You know what happened with Blue Peter? Yes, they, there was a painting competition or something, and they, the phone lines weren't working because so many people, and they just said there were some kids being shown around the studio and somebody working on the programme said, you've won, so go on and accept this award, and that was it. That's right. It's not quite on a par with pretending that Petra hadn't died, though, really, is it? Remember that? Yes. Didn't Pet Petra die? Petra died. And they just got another puppy that looked the same and called it Petra and went on for nine years with a the, the false dog. Mm. <laughs> well, we've all done that. It wasn't a false dog, it was another dog. It was like a puppet dog. <laughs> a dog made out of tin foil, you know. <laughs> Richard's actually replaced Judy nine times. <laughs> uh, now, Richard and Judy, um, viewers phoned in for their daily quiz. Uh, one corner was selected to play the game, uh, and the allegation was that the selection may have been made about ten minutes into the programme, uh, although other viewers were still being urged to call in. There's absolutely no suggestion that Judy Finnegan had the faintest inkling of what was going on. Ever. <laughs> in any of the shows. <laughs> Finally, there's the uh, small matter of the questions on ITV Play. One of them was, what things would you find in a women's handbag? Oh, yes, I saw this. Raw plugs. Yeah. <laughs> 75p a call, it was. <laughs> there, there were two of them. A balaclava that. and raw plugs. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably a Mrs. Martin McGuinness on her way back from uh, <laughs> VQ. <laughs> I want to go on Deal or No Deal and go through it really quickly. But if one's yeah, yeah. 317, yeah, 24, 13, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I'd open up the box in front of you and just yeah. walk out. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. I'd love to do that. <laughs> They're all TV programmes that have been accused of cheating, apart from Climax 3, which hasn't cheated but did mistakenly broadcast two hours of porn on BBC Scotland. Uh, some people didn't realise that they were viewing a pornographic orgy instead of the cricket, as there was a man at each end and 11 others standing around watching. <laughs> Is it a good thing to record TV programmes way in advance? Uh, that's a topic uh, which this show will be discussing next week with uh, guest host Steve Irwin. <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week includes uh, guest publication, The Journal of the Transport Ticket Society. 
<laughs> Most of the tickets illustrated in the magazine are for one adult. No surprise there. <laughs> Let's start with BBC's new boss says, I don't what very much. Watch TV. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't watch TV. Life. Yeah. Absolutely right. Tosser. <laughs> it doesn't matter, he's not watching. Um, <laughs> he listens on podcasts. <laughs> Next, the Queen loves it, but what faces closure? Prince Philip. <laughs> He's been torn down to build a bowling alley. <laughs> it's a shop in London, isn't it? Yeah. And it's... Is it not... No, it's no. not to be Harrods. <laughs> <laughs> really, 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 really not Harrods. Not really Harrods, yeah. is it? Is it Wales and Scotland? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I can put you with the bullshits. Um, it's uh, Royal's favoured hospital. Oh, it's the homeopathic place. Yeah, exactly. It is a homeopathic hospital. Uh, the Queen is a fervent believer in natural remedies, such as sucking the juice out of an organic lemon, usually just before having her photograph taken. <laughs> and finally, after a regular passenger passed away, drivers on the Abbott's Bromley route suggest what? On board crematorium. <laughs> Extra fuel, get up the hill. Right, you're thinking again. Suggest that he's misunderstood the word terminus. <laughs> <laughs> Answer is buying a reef. Well, it was the least they could do, considering it was them who knocked her over and dragged her body along for a quarter of a mile. <laughs> right, the final scores. Paul and Christian, you have six. Ian and Michael, you have eight. Great. <laughs> <laughs> But before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. This is, uh, uh, if you're not a premium customer at HSBC. <laughs> is it first casualty of Primark riot? <laughs> Apparently she tried to buy a three-pound smock top. <laughs> now Easy. she's dead. EasyJet insists that outdoor seats are not a problem. <laughs> You've got to think it through. <laughs> That's the woman on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> and I leave you with news that, in America, there are concerns for Dick Cheney's mental health as he insists on leading the attack on Iran. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in Westminster, there are fears that the recent hostage crisis has taken its toll on Margaret Beckett. And in St James's Park, after turning away for a split second, one little girl wonders what happened to her sardine sandwich. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>Dodgy greyhounds, fake funerals and drunken doctors next on BBC Two as Steptoe and Son ride again. And later, David Baddiel, Lenny James and Morwenna Banks in relationship meltdown. The announcement at 10 to 1. Something's been sick on your shoulder, Paul. <laughs> I wouldn't have spotted that otherwise, thank you. <laughs>And this A to Z companion for all fans of Have I Got News For You is packed with witty jokes.